The phrase David and Goliath over the course of decades, maybe even centuries, has become a mainstay within pop culture and media where a underdog situation unfolds, a contest wherein a smaller, weaker opponent steps up and challenges a much bigger, stronger adversary to a battle. Prime examples of that, Batman vs. Superman, Rocky Balboa vs. Drago, Craig vs. Debo. <laughs> I'm sorry. I laughed when I wrote that last one. It's, it still matters here, damn it. Leave me alone. But you get the gist. And when you incorporate that into the unique and chaotic world of professional wrestling, it's a pretty straightforward concept that can be created to give the audience at home, especially the people who could relate to the smaller opponent, something to invest their time and emotion into. Over the past couple of years, we've seen some pretty good instances of David and Goliath. 123 Kid vs. Razor Ramon in 1993, Kevin Nash vs. Rey Mysterio in 1999, Jeff Hardy vs. The Undertaker in 2002, Rey Mysterio vs. The Big Show in 2003, CM Punk vs. Brock Lesnar in 2013, Daniel Bryan vs. all three members of Evolution in 2014, just to name a few. But there is one in particular that I want to talk about today that I feel has either not been given enough credit or is completely forgotten about, and that's the story between the giant killer Spike Dudley and the giant Mike Awesome in ECW from 1999 that culminated at ECW Guilty as Charged in 2000. Earlier this week, I stumbled across an article about the feud from thesportster.com and thought to myself, hmm. This will be a great view for me to watch as surprisingly enough, I've never seen much from Mike Awesome's time in ECW outside of the odd off documentary released by WWE or his intense match with Masato Tanaka at ECW One Night Stand in 2005. So my reactions to this will be in real time and genuine. So sit back, relax, and let's see if Mike Awesome versus Spike Dudley is truly wrestling's most underrated David versus Goliath. First, for the uninitiated, Mike Awesome's time in the world of professional wrestling during his time on this earth is somewhat a mixed bag depending on who you convene with. Some people will tell you about his time as the fat chick thriller in WCW or his time in the WWF during the ill-received and lopsided WCW ECW invasion storyline in 2001 or how he left ECW in 2000 and joined WCW pissing off the entire ECW locker room in the process and after having to review a couple of episodes of his time in the Tribe of Extreme on recent episodes of my podcast, honestly, he was really good. In this particular situation, this was a case of a massive fish in a tiny pond and this was ECW in its final days as an independent promotion, so I mean tiny pond, like a, like a little splash. And Mike, yeah, he stood out to me in a good way. He was massive in stature, he was doing moves a man his size shouldn't do, and despite what many would probably tell you, it worked for me. I loved his partnership with Judge Jeff Jones. He did all the talking while Mike did all the ass kicking, and when there was a one-off chance that Mike spoke, it was direct and it made me appreciate the rivalries that went down just because people didn't like each other. In ECW, Mike Austin worked for me. And then there's little Spike Dudley, or LSD for short. Please YouTube. Don't demonetize me, is literally what they called him. <laughs> and also for those who don't know, Spike is the runt of the Dudley family. And after a lengthy on and off feud with his storyline half-brothers Bubba Ray and Devon Dudley, Spike will go on to have countless other feuds with the likes of Bam Bam Bigelow, PG-13, and would eventually adopt the nickname The Giant Killer. And despite coming up short or the odd off upset in said feuds as the year 1999 was beginning to wrap up, LSD would cross paths with the ECW World Heavyweight Champion, Mike Awesome. After successfully defending the ECW World Heavyweight title impromptu style on ECW TV, Mike Awesome came in contact with Spike Dudley who made an immediate impact against the Giant, leaving the champion stunned after hitting the acid drop, sending the message that he basically got next and the following events were set in motion. On the December 24th edition of ECW on TNN, a long-haired Dun Callis, then known as Cyrus, interrupted Joey Styles and Joel Gertner to announce a future world title showdown between Awesome and one of the heaviest hitters in Masato Tanaka on the following edition of ECW, but Judge Jeff Jones disputed that and said if either Tanaka or Spike Dudley wanted to crack at Mike Awesome, they had to go through him. 
Well, he got his wish. Spike immediately hit the ring and instantly took the judge out with an acid drop, which prompted the ECW World Champions to come out and get revenge for the attack a week prior. And Spike was about to go for a repeat, but Mike was ready this time, brushed off the drop, and then proceeded to yeet Spike into the crowd onto Tanaka. Commentary tried to say Masato caught him, but looking at the impact, nope, he barely caught that man. And this act from Awesome prompted Tanaka to bomb rush the ring and an intense pull apart brawl ensued, which forced security to attempt to keep them apart. And when Paul Heyman tried to calm down the champion, Cyrus jumped up next to him and said, don't wait until next week, do it right now and give the people what they want, telling him to have some balls and make the match official. Despite the hesitation from Heyman, because they had a pay-per-view to sell, so I get it. The executive did it and made the match official for right now, which got me, it got me hyped. And for this match to also be an impromptu style like the previous match before, this match was insane. Now I won't bother giving you a full bell to bell breakdown, but this match right here between Masato Tanaka and Mike Awesome is something I would recommend you going out of your way to check out if you're into this type of wrestling. That's just pure violence. It showed off Mike's agility from the beginning and it also showed off Masato's endurance to take punishment unlike no other. This man wrestled in tennis shoes and track pants. It was an on-site type beat with him. Just saying. There was also a table spot from the apron to the floor where Mike awesome bombed Tanaka through it and I instantly felt it because around this time there was not that much padding at ringside so if you took a bump you felt that. This man withstood repeated chair shots to the skull and even kicked out of a running awesome bomb. Now I know this video isn't about the rivalry between Awesome and Tanaka. If you guys want to see a future video on that, let me know. But I would be remiss if I didn't at least give this match some sort of praise because it was that good. But despite the intense back and forth, we even saw Awesome kick out after a tornado DDT through a tape. I'm like, what? Masato Tanaka defeated Mike Awesome after hitting a discus rolling elbow to win the ECW World Heavyweight Championship. And after showing Tanaka some respect by placing the title belt around his waist, Awesome said, gotcha, bitch, and laid out Tanaka with a lariat before powerbombing him to the floor, inciting the crowd to chant some lewd remarks towards the now former World Heavyweight Champion. But Awesome wasn't taking this loss lying down. He wanted to destroy Tanaka and get back his world title. And after intimidating Cyrus, he got his wish. On the December 31st, 1999 edition of ECW on TNN, still fuming about losing his title a week prior, Mike Awesome challenged Masato Tanaka for the ECW world title in another hard-hitting affair. And this time, Awesome did not hold back. But you already know Tanaka wasn't going to go down without swinging. But in the end, after a sick awesome bomb from the top rope, Mike Awesome became a two-time ECW World Heavyweight Champion and the celebration wasn't long because now we're back on track. After successfully reclaiming the ECW World Heavyweight Championship, Mike Awesome's celebration was interrupted once again by little Spike Dudley and this time Spike's attempt at an acid drop was stopped by Judge Jeff Jones and it became a two-on-one situation against Spike. And then out of left field, a woman dressed in a similar tie-dye tape glasses and overalls like Spike came out and took the fight to Jones and laid that man out with an acid drop of her own. This unnamed woman then went on to celebrate similar to that of Spike when he first laid out Mike Awesome a few weeks back, but then... Like a full speed truck, Mike Awesome decked her with a lariat and when I tell you I jumped back at the way she sold this move, I thought she died. And the way they treated this was pretty solid. You had people come in and instantly cover her up to protect her from a raging awesome. Spike slowly but surely crawled over to check on her and the crowd was left stunned. No one expected this to happen, but after seeing her bleeding profusely from the mouth, Spike went on the attack, raging after Mike and wanted to hit an acid drop on him, but Awesome brushed him off and sent him crashing through the table on the floor to end the show. Now looking back at the Sportster.com article, they claimed that ECW had a pretty spotty track record when it came to its presentation and use of women in its programming. Which I could believe because screaming CAFI was literally Joey Styles stick back in the day. But I have to agree with the article here. This one felt different. It felt like a serious moment. The crowd didn't hijack and brush it off. They went quiet and was genuinely shocked when she sat up and was spitting out blood. I love this. I loved every second of it. But it was Mike's actions that took this rivalry to that next level, heading into the year 2000. After the attack, Spike Dudley responded in the new year, eventually revealing her to be his girlfriend and that her teeth was knocked out. Spike pulling the matins? 
Okay, I see you run. I see you. But Spike made it crystal clear that it didn't matter if he won or lost. He was showing up to guilty as charged to hurt Mike Awesome. And I loved, I love this response. No nonsense, straight to the point, no glasses or tie-dye. It felt real. And you knew something was about to go down if and when Spike got his hands on the man who hurt his woman. On the final ECW before guilty as charged, Spike Dudley vows to get extreme with Mike Awesome for what he did to his girlfriend. While the duo of Awesome and Judge Jeff Jones showed no remorse for what happened with Mike Awesome, claiming that if he'll do that to his rat and bread girlfriend, imagine what he would do to a man like him. And when he said that, all I could say was, Beat his ass, Spike! Beat his ass! We are live from the ECW Bo 12 Memorial Auditorium from Birmingham, Alabama for ECW Guilty as Charged with Joey Styles and Cyrus on. <laughs> I'm sorry. Seeing Cyrus or Don Callis with long hair compared to how he looks now will never not crack me up. Why are you bald? <laughs> I'm sorry. But after watching his girlfriend get her teeth knocked out, it's time for the main event where the giant killer, Spike Dudley, despite Joey Styles and himself claiming that he doesn't care about the title, challenges Mike Awesome for the ECW World Heavyweight Championship. And before the bell even rung, Spike bullied a ringside crew member into helping him set up tables all around the ringside area, setting the stage for a match of violence, and told that man he made a career of putting people through tables and beating up women while he... <laughs> I'ma let him say it. That's not a bar spike. You're a victim. Before telling him to get his ass to the ring and the match was on. Spike instantly took the fight to the bigger opponent, but Mike quickly overpowered Lil Spike and sent that man crashing through a table before he even got his belt off. But Mike, Mike wasn't done. He sent him crashing through two tables stacked and the onslaught was on, not in favor of LSD. Despite getting destroyed with ease, Mike Awesome could not keep Little Spike down for the count and he kept fighting through the pain using chairs to create some space and a moment to breathe but that wasn't long as after a minor slip up from Spike which the crowd and Mike let Spike have it letting him know that he f***ed up. Despite that little hiccup Mike regained control and every time Spike tried to fight back he could not keep the little run down. Throughout the match we saw Mike Awesome show his agility and power against Spike and had a moment where he was about to inflict more punishment but a desperate and gushing of blood spike went low and connected with an acid drop on the outside and went rage mode on the champion choking him out with cables and unleashing on him with chairs but that wasn't enough to keep the champ down who sent spike crashing to the floor after countering another acid drop and mike inflicted more punishment on spike but every time every time spike just wouldn't stay down until mike hit a sickening awesome bomb from the top rope through a table to retain the title the heart and will of spike wasn't enough to overcome this giant now despite coming up short in this one i personally believe that this short david versus goliath scenario was executed very well it wasn't overly convoluted it was a simple case of you hurt someone i care about the most and now i want to hurt you i want to break every bone in your body and yes, I will get knocked around. Yes, I will probably lose, but you will know you've been in a fight with me and you will have to kill me to get me to stop coming after you. And following this match, Spike kept coming after Mike Awesome in future championship matches, which he obviously lost. And once Spike Dudley went down with a knee injury, which he suffered during the match at Guilty as Charge, and to my knowledge, Mike Awesome and Spike Dudley never faced each other again in ECW before the doors closed with their final documented match according to cagematch.net being on smackdown in october 2001 in a tag team match also involving big show and the hurricane as their respective tag team partners side note what the hell was spike wearing here he looked like a thumb in his spandex anyways now after watching this in real time and writing down my thoughts on this brief feud as it unfolded does mike awesome versus spike dudley deserve the title of underrated david versus goliath I can confidently say yes, because you had this guy who was determined to get revenge on the guy who hurt the woman he cares about without a care in the world and showed absolutely no remorse 
And despite knowing for a fact that he wasn't going to win, you still had that small ounce of hope that he would pull the upset of the century and topple this giant like Rocky did Drago and Craig did Debo twice. And in my opinion, this was a perfect David versus Goliath scenario. And despite this David being on the losing end again and again, you can't help but give credit where it's due and give this feud its flowers. I also believe this doesn't get the credit it deserves because of how it only lasted a month and it was during the final years of the original ECW. But I can honestly say watching this unfold made me appreciate Mike Awesome and Spike Dudley's contributions to the wrestling business even more. And even though we've seen countless David vs. Goliath scenarios since, and more than likely we'll see more in the future, I can wholeheartedly say that Mike Awesome vs. Spike Dudley deserves to be up there as one of the best David vs. Goliath feuds in wrestling. Brock Lesnar on the beast. On the beast. Uh, Eat, sleep, flex, and repeat. Uh, Whole new swag with a price on the tag. Coming live from the west to the east. Coastal. Better recognize on the mouthpiece. mouthpiece. See the power level gotta increase. increase. Bringing content on the